Welcome back. I ended the previous video looking at this situation, and let's see how you did at reasoning about it. So, this box goes down, and whenever something goes down, the gravitational potential energy decreases. You might be worried about what the system is, because I haven't defined that. It doesn't matter at the moment. The gravitational potential energy of the universe certainly decreased. Whether our system's gravitational potential energy decreased would depend on how we define our system. Similarly, there's friction or rubbing going on here, and so things must have warmed up, or in other words, the thermal energy increased. And the box speeds up, so the kinetic energy increases. Note, this is all really nuts and bolts. Something went down, things rubbed, something sped up. That tells us. So, the gravitational potential energy decreased, so it must have converted to other forms, and kinetic energy and thermal energy increased, and so that tells us what the transformation was. One way we can organize all the types of energy into a conceptual picture is by splitting it up into energy of motion, energy of configuration, or how things are arranged, or their positions, and whether the energy is to do with coherent, or organized motions, versus incoherent, or disorganized motions. So, coherent motion, where all the atoms in an object move in an organized way, is contrasted with incoherent motion, where the object itself doesn't move overall, but we're talking about the individual motions of the atoms inside it. Similarly, we can talk about the object being deformed in some organized way, but it can also be deformed, or the atoms in it can be rearranged in various incoherent or disorganized ways. Coherent motion is what we refer to as kinetic energy. Configurations that change in organized ways lead to changes in potential energy. Incoherent motion is captured by thermal energy. Source energy, which has many forms, chemical energy, nuclear energy, light energy, is a little more complicated. It is definitely incoherent, though, and it tends to be a combination of energy due to motions and configuration. Transformations between kinetic and potential energy are always reversible. They can be done with 100% efficiency, and they can be undone. But any time we convert to or from incoherent forms of energy, those conversions are always irreversible. For that reason, the coherent types are sort of special, because we can transform back and forth between them freely as often as we want. And so we call that subset of energies mechanical energy. The easiest way to conceive of reversible and irreversible processes is to think about what processes look like played forward or played in reverse. So, for example, here's a mass oscillating up and down on a spring. Here's the forward video, here's the reverse video. Or maybe I lied. Can you tell? Similarly, here's a ball being thrown. Forward, reverse. Or maybe I lied. Can you tell? On the other hand, you can almost certainly tell with this video of a book sliding across the floor. Which is the forward and which is the reverse? Similarly, with this totally inelastic collision of two carts, you can almost certainly tell which is forward and which is reverse. The point here is that processes which are reversible generally are indistinguishable from their reverse processes. But there are other ways of telling, and so here are a few rules of thumb. Any process which produces thermal energy is irreversible. So, for example, when you pull something across a floor, you're generating thermal energy because of kinetic friction, and so this has to be irreversible. Similarly, transformations to and from any form of source energy are irreversible, 
and always produce thermal energy as a result. So a very familiar simple example is just burning a candle. We start with E chemical. We're going to get some light energy, which is another form of source energy, but we've transformed source energy, and so inevitably we get thermal energy, which is hopefully fairly intuitive to you. The sort of situation we're going to be more concerned with in this course, though, is something like a power plant, and it's going to be critical to our understanding that we realize that what goes on in a power plant is an irreversible process. So we start with chemical energy, in this case in the form of coal. The ultimate goal here is to convert that into electric potential energy. However, because this is an irreversible process, some of that chemical energy must be converted into thermal energy. There's a smokestack, we know burning is going on and thermal energy is being produced there, but actually most of the thermal energy is here in this plume of steam coming out of the cooling stacks. Let's check that you're understanding some of these ideas about how to recognize irreversible versus reversible processes. So consider three processes, a ball being dropped, and so it speeds up as it falls and there's no air drag, a hot air balloon which burns propane, which heats up the air in the balloon, and the balloon rises because of that. And C, a spring is being used to push a mass across a rough surface. It launches that object, so the object speeds up, but then it's eventually going to slow down and stop. Which of these processes are reversible?